grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Eternal God, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 78, and it's verses 1 through 7. Psalm 78, verses 1 through 7. We'll say the psalm together. <clears throat> Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord, and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob, and established the law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God, and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. 
But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know. Not, you do, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are only three weeks away from the uh, beginning of Advent. And it hardly seems possible. I don't know where the year has gone. This has been the longest year and the fastest year at the same time, it seems. But for those of you who've been following week by week, I want to point out to you that Jesus is still in the temple. And these last three weeks, he tells three separate parables uh, whose purpose is um, to warn. There are lots of parables in which Jesus uh, tells people, you know, that they're special, that God loves them, that God seeks after them, that God is there to protect them. But these parables all end up with somebody on the outside in outer darkness weeping and gnashing of teeth. So <clears throat> these are warning parables. And I want to put to you that they all go together. One, two, three. This week is the wise and foolish virgins. Uh, next week we'll read the parable of the talents. And then the third week we'll hear about the sheep and the goats. And these three together mark one long arc. But I'm going to begin with the bridesmaids. I've done a lot of weddings in my life. Having been at the chapel at Huron for many years, I saw lots of young couples. I married them all. Uh, the, those that came through, we did marriage prep. I, I've done a lot of weddings in my day. And I've dealt with a lot of bridesmaids. I've dealt with a lot of bridesmaids. And there are happy bridesmaids and there are sad bridesmaids. And there are bridesmaids who are mad about the situation, feeling that they should have been the maid of honor. And there are bridesmaids who are just happy to be there. There are bridesmaids who hate their dresses. There are bridesmaids who love their dresses. There are all kinds of bridesmaids. But bridesmaids have particular jobs. Very particular jobs. In our culture, the bridesmaids are meant to attend to the bride. To take care of her um, as the night goes on. You know, to help her negotiate a trip to the bathroom in that enormous dress with all the crinolines and the silk and all that kind of stuff. They worry about the hair. They fuss with the hem. They do all the things that are supposed to keep the bride happy and looking good through the evening. In the ancient Near East, however, bridesmaids had, had a different job. Their job was to meet the bridegroom and take him and introduce him to the bride. And that's the core of what Jesus is trying to use. This, this moment is Jesus is using as a teaching tool. Now, you can go through all the commentaries you want and people will have all kinds of speculation about what this parable means. And it has brought many a preacher to naught. They just don't know how to face it. Well, I'm not going to claim that mine is the only interpretation. I'm not going to claim that mine is the perfect interpretation. But I'm going to say I think it has meaning. I believe that the oil in the lamp is our faith, our measure, our practice of faith. I think that it's our job to introduce the bridegroom to the bride. And the light by which we do that is through our faith and our practice. So here's the problem. I want you to imagine the bridegroom, who in this case is Jesus, and the bride, who is the church. And here's a hard question to ask you. Will Jesus recognize the bride by the light from your lamp because you and I are meant to be the bridesmaids we are meant to introduce the bridegroom to the bride by the light of our faith by the light of the justice we seek in this world by the light of our righteousness granted by him by the light of everything that by but the fancy word for all of that is by the light of the grace we have received and there is plenty of it, but you need to carry it with you. Note here, the, the foolish virgins who didn't bring any oil with them, they could go and get more, and they did. But their timing was off. Their central purpose was to introduce the bridegroom to the bride, and they missed it. 
Why? Because they'd let the supply run low. And it is so easy to let the supply run low, to be run down, to feel like there's nothing going, to feel like you're running out of gas, to feel like you can't do it anymore. But Jesus also reminds us that there's plenty, plenty more to go. I don't know if you sang through camp songs as a kid. You know where I'm going next, folks. Give me oil for my lamp. Keep me burning. The truth of that song is about <clears throat> God gives us the very gift we need in order to accomplish the work we've been sent to accomplish. He gives us the grace by which we can light the way for the bridegroom to recognize the bride. Now, I'm not, I want you to understand that these, these, these are metaphors for understanding how Jesus is always present to the church. Jesus is always present, is always present in the church. But in that moment, these are end of times kind of um, parables. They're ways of describing kind of how God's going to wrap it all up. And in the end, the really burning question that's put to us is, will Christ recognize the church by the light of your faith? Is there enough light coming for you, from you, given to you, but coming from you, to light the way? Will Jesus recognize the church? I believe he will, because we've always been reminded it doesn't have to be a lot. How much faith do you need? A mustard seed. It's only the little bits, but the little bits make a huge difference. This juxtaposition about having enough and not having enough, waiting and arrival, these are all part of this process. The measure of faith you have received, the grace that has changed your life, is the light by which others will find the church too, not just the bridegroom. That's your job as a bridesmaid, to light the way for others. And if you're not prepared to, well, then you're probably the mad bridesmaid who doesn't like your dress. You're the one that thinks you ought to be the maid of honor. Or maybe you ought to be the bride. This parable is a warning because at the end, those who have had enough light and were present of mind to make sure that they kept the light burning are present in the wedding feast, which is Jesus' code for heaven. They're present at the wedding banquet. But those who were not ready, those who let their supply run low, those whose lights went out, are outside the doors. They're banging on the door saying, Lord, Lord, let us in. But he replied, I tell you, I, I don't know you. And he doesn't know them because he never had light by which to see them. Jesus warns us, now, in these last three weeks before Advent, to keep awake, to be alert, to stay on guard, to keep our lamps trimmed and ready to go, to have our supply of oil ready. Next week he's going to tell us to do what we can in the kingdom with what we have been given. And the week after that he's going to tell us the results of our investments. For now. Our job is to be enough light for someone to find the bride and the bridegroom, to bring them together so that others may know the peace, the grace, and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dying, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
We need to keep ourselves awake and prepared so that the day of the Lord does not come to us as darkness rather than light. And so in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, anoint your church all over the world with the oil of your Spirit so that we would burn brightly, lighting the dark world with your love and truth. Keep our church communities from error and sin and supply us all through word and sacraments with all that our souls require. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, take the false values of our world and upend them. Take the oppressed and free them. Take the leaders and inspire them. Take the past and redeem it, the present and fill it, the future and guide us in it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, it is in our homes and daily tasks that you train us in loving obedience. We pray for those who have to live and work with us and are familiar with our habits, our gifts, and our faults. May we make the most of the opportunities to love, to forgive, to stand back, and to reach out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we pray for all who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, surround them with your love and healing, your reassurance and peace. We pray for those who are too weak or exhausted to pray, but simply know they ache for your comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as real and living for the dead as for those of us walking through time, we commend to your mercy and love those who have died in your faith and friendship. May we all share in the joy of Christ's coming in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, all the resources for holiness you lovingly provide, and we thank you for your ongoing and unlimited provision. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to the table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Gracious God, your word to us is food indeed. Receive all we offer you this day and let your loving kindness be our comfort. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your living word. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the, the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you when you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church, gathering to one all who share in these sacred mysteries filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Living God, in this Eucharist, you fill us with new hope. May the power of your love, which we have known in word and sacrament, continue your work among us and bring us to the joy you promise. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power were he in us, and may you live in the more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.